<clears throat> I'd like to call to order the Wednesday, November 9th, 2022 Townsend Conservation Commission meeting. Can I have a roll call, please? Patricia Jemma here. Joan Savoy here. James Gates. Anne LaCoya. Linda Mack here. Colby Street are here. Commercial, residential, or uh, Um, <clears throat> this meeting is being re uh, being recorded. Is there anyone else recording? Uh, I'd like to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones. Um, chairman's ad additions and deletions. Uh, I do not have any. Um, and uh, I do not have anything for a chair report. Uh, it will, anything I have will actually be covered with Jessica's um, report from last week. Um, review and approve meeting minutes from 10 18 22. Everyone had a chance to review. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We have a motion and a second. Can I have a uh, can I I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from 10 18 22. Second. Roll call vote, please. Pat Jamal. Yes. Joan Savoy. Yes. James Gates. Yes. Yes. And eating our table items. So it shows the currently selected features that are at. Colby Streeter, Epstein. Linda uh, Mack. Yes. And that's the one currently selected. All right. What are we hearing? That's the one that's selected we... <laughs> Sorry, I have two Zoom meetings on now. I gotta I'll silence the other one. Um one point six agents report. All right, so this is date covered October twenty fourth to November fourth. I have three building permit interdepartmental signatures, 74 Brookline Street, 310 Main Street, and 98 West Meadow Road. I, on behalf of Crowdcom, completed one referral from the Board of Selectmen, and that was for license renewal for um, common, ooh, vic victualer? Victual. Ooh, thank you, food vendors and alcoholic beverages. And then I signed off for the Board of Health on Three Sonder Road. Uh, the request for the order of conditions of extension for 27 scale lane, they are officially fully compliant as of a couple weeks ago. So we will process their extension request tonight. Um, still continuing to contact applicants with outstanding orders and conditions to get their certificates of compliance to filed. Um, we had the NOI for 22 Sauna Row Road, and we issued a standard order of condition on October 31st. We had two RDAs for 421 and 423 Main Street. We issued a negative three determination of applicability on October 31st. We had a request for certificate of compliance for 35 Adams Road. We issued that certificate on November 1st. We also had a request for certificate of compliance for 54 Barker Hill Road. We issued that certificate on October 31st. Um, we have an NOI. So I did um, NOI for Harbor Trace Water Treatment Plant and Associated Water Line. So I did an intake and completeness review for that. Um, I listened to some public inquiries. We had a site visit on November 2nd, and there's a public hearing scheduled to open for that tonight. Um, we received a complaint regarding sedimentation and erosion originating from a private property at 158 Main Street. We had a site visit on October 28th and a letter mailed to the property owner on the 31st invited to come before the commission. We uh, mailed out a second letter indicating attempt to connect with the owner at 61 Edward Road on October 31st. Uh, we have a request for COC for Thick Ball Road. Uh, I did a site visit inspection for that on November 2nd. We'll process that tonight. Um, received a complaint. So I emailed Asplund, um, the tree removal company, 
regarding concerns of tree felling into wetlands at Haynes Road and Hog Hill Road. Um, they left trees in wetlands. Uh, so I connected with the staff from that company on November 2nd and the trees were removed from the wetland a couple days later. And then I have been trying to check in with the applicant for the Squanacook Wildlife Management Area project for scheduling an application status on October 26th and again on November 2nd. And that's all, if you have any questions. I just want to note that the site visit um, for 158 Main Street was a site visit, but it was off site. It was on public property. Right, yes. Access via the rail trail. Questions, comments? Yeah, Jessica, please. The last, the, the Squan quote, could you run that by us again? That's the um, ecological NOI for about 200 acres of habitat restoration proposed by Mass Wildlife on Shirley Road. Linda, we, we've been up there, right? That's the place. Okay. And what was the paperwork you filed, please? Nothing. Just they, checked they've in. They've just been checking in. Oh, they've they've attempted their public hearing several times now. So. Right. They currently want it on December 14th, which is coming up soon, considering they have an incomplete application. So I'm trying to find out if their intent is still to have the hearing on the 14th. Wow. TBD. Right. So. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, we're two minutes before our hearing. <clears throat> Anyone else? Linda, Colby, do you have any? Questions, comments, Linda. I know you went uh, with us to go look at the sediment with uh, Doc McGee. Yeah, I, I saw that it's on the agenda. Um, so I didn't know if you want to wait till that discussion. Nope, we wait. Okay. Just trying to eat up a minute. I know. <laughs> Letter, crazy, right? Yeah, we have a minute. Um, I appreciate it. Nice so I can it. ask. I can ask a question without it hopefully going into a big discussion. But whenever an enforcement letter is done, um, have you been in the past? Because there's not that many, obviously. Do you ratify them? Have you been ratifying them on the Conservation Commission? And it's not a formal enforcement order, no. If we actually send out a WPA enforcement order mm -hmm. on one of their forms, then we need to do that in front of the commission. But if it's just sort of a initial letter, no. You don't. I put it in my agent report. This okay. one in particular warranted a discussion, but okay. that's sort of a, a case by case scenario. Okay. We can read it in a second. Okay. <clears throat> so, 710, um, 2.0 hearings and appointments, uh, 2.1 notice of intent. Uh, we do not have a DEP number um, as of today. Um, uh, Towns and Wetlands bylaw number 2022 139. Applicant Town of Water Department location is portions of the roadway rights of way of Harbor, Harbor Trace Road, South Street, South Harbor Road, Ash Street, South Row Road, and Emory Road. Project status, this proposed project is for the development of a PFAS water treatment plant off of uh, Harbor Trace Road and associated water lines along the above referenced roads. Parts of the construction will take place within bordering lands subject to flooding riverfront areas and 100 feet of bordering vegetated wetlands. Um, so we need a motion to open the hearing. Make a motion to open the hearing notice of intent. Towns um, and Wetland Bylaw 2022-139. Applicant Towns and Wetland Bylaw. Yes, get a second please. Second. Roll call vote. Patricia Jamal, yes. Joan Savoy, yes. James Gates, yes. Anne LaCroix, yes. Linda Mack, yes. 
globally straighter, yes. James, can I just ask you, since they don't have a DEP number yet, we can only do a few things, is that correct? Yes, I have a bunch list of things. Thank you. Does citizens get to comment on that or no? Or is there a certain? Uh, yes, there will be a comment period. Okay, I didn't know how that works. So, so it's just like you call a comment period and then that yes. can get the, okay. Yep. Um, Can we read this? Yes, please. Um, I'll now read the legal notice. This is uh, this was posted by the Townsend, Town of Town of Townsend Conservation Commission, pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Townsend Wetlands Bylaw. The Townsend Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, November 9, 2022, at approximately 7:10 p.m. The hearing will be held virtually via Zoom meeting and in person at Town Hall on a notice of intent NOI filed with the Conservation Commission by the Townsend Water Department on behalf of Ty and Bond. The project will take place along portions of the roadway rights of way of Harbor Trace Road, South Street, South Harbor Road, Ash Street, South Row Road, and Emory Road. The proposed project is for the development of a PFAS water treatment plant off of Harbor Trace Road and associated water lines along the above referenced roads. The project consists of several independent components. The construction of a new PFAS water treatment facility, a raw water transmission main, and a water main extension. Part of the construction will take place within bordering lands subject to flooding, riverfront areas, and 100 feet of bordering vegetated wetlands. Parties wishing to speak in support of or in opposition to this application may do so at the hearing or in writing prior to the hearing, copies of this application are available for review at Town Hall during business hours, and it's signed by Jessica Consalvo, our Towns and Conservation Commission agent. So we have uh, representatives from Ty and Bonds on the Zoom call and present. Um, I don't know if you want to give a Sure, I'll just introduce the description and sure. the overall project. And Dave Vigian is here as well um, with the water department. Sure, my name is Lou Sirocco with Ty and Bond. Uh, on behalf of the town's water department, we've pulled together the 2010 era, uh, our combined treatment plant project and associated water mains. Um, is it appropriate at this time? I think we have probably a couple slides to, to share on the screen to help describe the project and I think Mary is with us as well as Julia from Time Bonds. Which of them is going to do screen sharing? Well, I, think I will. Bradley, can you give Julia or yeah, Julia screen sharing permission, please? And while she's bringing that up, um, just to give a little quick um, uh, description for, for the need for the project, um, Harbor Trace uh, Well, the existing well in town, largest source in town, um, has um, been sampled and found to have PFAS contamination, so it's been offline, the, the, the largest well in town, um, which is Brook uh, nearby around the corner off Ash Street. Um, has also sampled, but is below the regulatory limit. But there are um, impending uh, legislations that could put that uh, in peril of being over the limit. So uh, part of the project is to run a raw water transmission main between the two sites to treat a combined uh, filtration plant. And then the water main extension portion is to alleviate the issue of uh, redundancy. Right now, uh, if there was a failure or a weight break in the water main, a significant portion of the town of towns that would be without water. This project uh, loops the system and uh, would allow for a consistent supply of water in the event of a, a water main break. So go ahead, Julia, whenever you're ready. Um, I still cannot share my screen, but uh, I will do so when I have the permission. Okay, I will, uh, I'll see if I can uh, do that for you. Hold on one moment. Uh, yes, John. Um, can I clarify, please? So once a town's PFAS level reach a certain level, you, it is by law that a treatment 
plant must be installed correct. Correct. I just want to correct. for the record, yeah. everybody. Massachusetts that. have regulated these contaminants. Um, and yeah, you must, you must treat below the regulated limits. Okay, uh, uh, Jane Novotny, uh, Tig and Bond, you are now able to screen share. Okay, is everyone able to see this okay? I have my aerial photographs up. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna go through the impacts um, as it relates to CONCOM jurisdiction um, of the water main. So the raw water main is going to start, um, originate at the proposed water treatment plant here off Harbor Trace Road. Um, and this portion of the project is not, um, the water treatment plant is not within any resource areas, but um, the, the raw transmission main um, runs up Harbor Trace Road. And then it goes to, um, turns on to South Street and then down South Harbor Road. And then it goes down Ash Street. And at the end of Ash Street, um, the raw water main um, has a, a few impacts to watering land subject to flooding. And uh, it's also within the 100 foot buffer zone to BVW and the locally regulated uh, buffer zone to BLSF. So those are the impacts for the raw water main. Um, the looping water main starts here at the intersection of Ash Street and South Harbor Road. And it um, runs down South Harbor, down South Row, and eventually turns onto Emory Street, um, Emory Road. And um, this water main has the majority of the uh, impacts to um, wetland resource areas. So um, the impacts are, um, again, within bordering land subject to flooding. This is the only area for the looping water main where those impacts occur um, at the intersection of Old Meeting House, South Row, and South Harbor. Um, it's also within the 100-foot buffer zone to BLSF and to um, Inland Bank and BVW, as well as the riverfront area here to Bixby Brook. Um, and then further down the, the riverfront area to Wishes Brook. Um, so we can talk about the culverts as well. I know that's a point that we wanted to discuss at the meeting, um, but I'll just finish looking at the rest of the impacts and then go back and look at the culverts. So it goes down South Row Road. Um, there's a couple more buffer zone impacts on South Row and then it turns onto Emory. And this is where there's more buffer zone impacts as well as riverfront area impacts to which is Brook right here at the intersection of South Row and Emory. Um, and then it runs down Emory Road um, with some more buffer zone impacts to Inland Bank and Wetlands. And then it ends at the end of Emory Road um, and it has some more riverfront area impacts to Bixby Brook, as well as the locally regulated 200-foot um, buffer zone to certain lakes and ponds. In this case, it's Graves Pond. Um, so I'll go back and discuss some of the culvert crossings. The raw water main does not have any culvert crossings, but the looping water main has 12 culvert crossings. Um, the first one is at the near the intersection of Old Meeting House, South Harbor, and South Row Road. This one is a 18-inch diameter HDPE pipe. And um, I'm actually going to switch screens here to show you a table of our culvert information. Can you see this new screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first culvert crossing is at that intersection of um, that I mentioned. And um, this one is approximately um, three and a half feet. The culvert, top of the culvert is approximately three and a half feet below the, the surface of the road. So in this case, we're going to horizontally directional drill below that culvert, seeing as though it's pretty shallow. Um, and then the next one is on South uh, Row Road. Um, that one is a 15 inch diameter corrugated metal pipe and that one is approximately five feet below the surface of the road and um, that one will also be HDD. 
Um, there are two 12 inch corrugated metal pipe culverts um, at the intersection of Emory and South Row Road. Um, and these two will also be HDD because they're about four and three and a half feet below the um, surface of the road. Um, and then there's a few that are um, less shallow. These are about um, five and a half to six feet below the surface. Um, the 15 inch diameter corrugated metal pipe, 18 inch and, eight, and then another 18 inch corrugated metal pipe. And those will be open cut trench installation of the water main above the culverts. Um, and those will be at a depth of approximately four feet. And then um, the rest of these are all on Emory Road. Um, and again, the ones that are shallower um, will be, well, the method will be horizontal directional drilling. And then where, where there's more coverage, um, it will be open cut trench above the culverts. Um, there are some gas, there are some other utilities, so gas main um, present as well in these areas. Um, those gas mains will be um, afforded a two foot minimum um, vertical separation from the water main. Um, and most of the, uh, at all of these crossings, those areas, um, in those areas, the gas main crosses the culvert either off the roadway or on the opposite side of the water main. Um, there's a couple areas where it's perpendicular to the water main and on the same side. Um, but like I said, the water main and gas main will be um, separated by at least two feet vertically. And no impacts to the gas mains are, are anticipated um, by water the water main installation. Um, yeah, so that's all I have for the culverts. Oh yes, and then um, in terms of the culvert crossing, open cut trench or HDD, the clearance will be minimum of six inches from the culvert and there aren't any anticipated impacts to those culverts. Um, and we had mentioned at our site visit that should any issues arise, uh, anything breaking, um, the town will, will um, remedy that, but there's no plans to actively fix any existing, existingly, uh, existing cul culverts unless the town encounters an issue during water main construction. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a good overview of the water main uh, impacts to wetlands and other resource areas. Um, are there any questions? One, one thing that I will add uh, is that uh, uh, part of the uh, construction documents that will go out to bid, as this will be a publicly bid project, there'll be a, um, a specification in there to require the contractor to go out and do a uh, video recording pre-condition uh, documentation of the entire route along the way. They'll document, um, you know, all, all, all property with you know adjacent to the project establish what the existing conditions are um, and this would include um, each of the culverts um, so before any work begins there will be a, uh, a documentation process of, of existing conditions so that anything that does um, get changed uh, or uh, inadvertently impacted we've got documentation to show how to bring it back to uh, um, existing or, or better condition before the contractor leaves. I have a question. Um, I saw in the um, proposal that um, you'll be doing mitigating measures to protect the, um, the different resource areas. Um, will they be the type of um, mitigating measures? Will they be on the plans? Will they be required to be on the plans? so that we can see what they're planning to do with each culver crossing and all the rest. Yes, yeah, so are you referring to um, like erosion sedimentation control measures? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those will be required to be on the plans for the contractor. Um, mm -hmm. I believe so, Lou, is that correct? Yeah, we, we leave them on just as, as, as they've shown. If uh, there's comments where you think we need to add more, we are 
more than happy to add more where, wherever needed. Um, but that is a unit price uh, number that we, um, that we show and both ask the contractor to give us a price on. Um, and we typically what happens is um, we, we, you know, that's the first thing the contractor goes out and they, they establish those, those measures. And then typically an agent comes and inspects those before work is allowed to commence. So uh, that's pretty standard for us. Yeah. As well as we've got standard details uh, in the event that say water is encountered for appropriate water control, or like dewatering programs as they're, mm -hmm. as they're uh, digging their trench and excavating, uh, if they need to dewater to complete their work. Uh, there, there is a detail that shows how we plan to dewater the hole to allow them to do that uh, in, a, in a manner that, um, that, that mitigates the impacts that surround the area. And is the process that uh, we get to see those plans again, or like when you get when you decide who is going to be doing the work, the contractor, will we be seeing those? Will the Conservation Commission have an opportunity to see those plans again, or? What you see is what we will put out to bid, and those are available to anyone to yeah, we have download. Copies. We have copies. Yep, yep. So if there's something that you see that needs to be augmented, we're more than happy to incorporate that. But you know, once we do, that stays on the plan, and that's what goes out for for public bid. Uh, Lou, I this is Mary Danielson. I just wanted to add that we are um, based on the table that Julia showed of the. Um, culvert crossings that are going to be drilled versus trenched. Uh, we are going to update the plans to reflect that, um, and I anticipate we'll submit those prior to the next hearing um, in December. Yeah. So you, you'd get to see, you know, the updated plans reflecting um, those drilled portions. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Thanks. Yeah. So I have a question for Lou and then for Jessica, please. Lou, so the site stabilization in the, the NOI, it says that inspections shall occur occur one time a week and after every rainstorm of 0.25 inches or greater. That seems ambitious. Uh, who will be doing those and how will that be reported, please? Uh, for uh, these types of projects, uh, like pipeline installations, we have a full-time resident observer on site at all times. So um, they'll be inspected every day, regardless of the granting. Yeah, so a quarter of an inch is typically normal. They're trying to mitigate any washouts and yep. and so who how's the reporting done on that? Um so each each day the um the, the inspector will go and take a look, especially if it's rained, he'll go and inspect those those areas. Uh and then he he goes right to the contractor to have him uh, uh fix those right away. Um if Someone from the town comes by and they see something that we don't see, by all means, you know, let us know and we will inform the contractor to, to you know, fix that situation. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you. I will note that the planning board will be the stormwater authority for yes. this. That, that was my that was my question to you. Okay, since all right. We we obviously take care and consideration over pollution and our resource areas, mm -hmm. but that's as far as we can. You know, control. Because right. we're, you know, site stabilization, that's our thing. So, okay, good. Thank you. So, planning board, because we don't have a land use coordinator at this time. Well, no. it's going to be a major project. Regardless oh, of right. The yeah. Size. yeah. But, Jessica, okay. isn't it that most culverts are resource areas that we are overseeing, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that Julia mentioned, all the buffers and the resources themselves. Okay. That that is the extent of our juris of your jurisdiction. Exactly. Okay. Yes, we could still oversee all of it. <laughs> My jurisdiction. <laughs> um. Do we have any other questions from the commission? I think I have to explain it. Are we going to speak more about where the treatment center, uh, treatment facility actually is? Off so of that's Harvard. Outside, that is actually outside of our jurisdiction. Oh, is it? Okay. It's outside of resource areas, it's away from it. So, um, so no. <laughs> yeah. isn't, the there some in, isn't there some endangered species there? Or did I miss, yeah. understand that? The turtles. The blended turtles. 
What's the status on that, please? What I said, you're going to, if necessary, a turtle protection plan will be implemented for all work performed between April 15th and October 15th and will be submitted to NHESP. It has been. It's been, a, 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 I believe, Julia, correct me if I'm wrong, streamlined review. Is that the, the correct terminology? Yes, um, it was submitted to National Heritage with the NOI application um, at the same time. So we're still awaiting comments. I believe we're still within their 30 day comment period. Okay. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I know s some of you, all of you can read those HydroCAD, HydroCAD reports mm -hmm. because I sure couldn't. Okay. That was pretty impressive. I mean, I assume it will be the project engineer that will be monitoring if there's a turtle plan. Yes, the GMP observer, yep, on site. Yeah, typically during the active periods, there's protection barriers. Yeah, you walk, so, yeah. yeah. No moving until you walk. Right. What, what, when you say that, what do you mean by that? You have to walk out in front of equipment, trucks. Ah. Oh, very good. So. Thank you. You'd be a good turtle monitor, John. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So this hearing is going to be continued, continued and, and we, we'll have a much more detailed discussion on the 14th because we have not received DEP comments yet. Um, those tend to be very technical. So instead of us having a very long-winded conversation tonight with the okay. plan changes and everything, I would probably suggest that we save a lot more. If you have clarifying questions now, of course, we can we can open those, but um, until we get a final plan and scope of work. Okay, that's what I was trying to get at, because I didn't, <laughs> so good. Um, Do you need a motion to continue the hearing? Oh, well, not, no, we're not done. Yeah. We're not done? Sorry, I, ha I have a, a checklist of okay. how we need to do this. Um, so we do not have, as Jessica just said, DEV comments at this time, so we will hold off having more of a discussion. Um, we do, um, we would like to offer a period for public comments. Um, we request that they are relevant to Conservation Commission um, as we can address them. And if they are not relevant to Conservation Commission, um, we will document them and share them with the water department for their 1114 meeting. So is there public comment? I have public comment. Do you um, mind coming up uh, a little closer and introducing yourself, please? I just don't think it'll reach you. Oh. Um, Andrea Landry, oh. I live on Harbor Trade Road. Um, I guess my big, biggest, um, I do not have, I didn't even know about this plant until a few days ago. So aside from that, um, I cannot afford my water anymore. And I'm assuming it's because of this project. I got a $3,000 water bill. 400% increase between last year at the same same time and this year. I cannot afford to pay for that bill. Um, I request that this has to do with the actual water department and not conservation. Um, and but it does this not is pertain. The why our bills have gone up. This is not uh, No, th this is not the reason. The state is actually paying for this treatment plan. Oh, it is? Yes. Then somebody told me they very quickly why. <laughs> you need to go to a water but, uh, The 14th meeting. of November, the water department 14th, has a meeting. The 14th of, oh, 14th Monday. of November? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. okay. When they don't meet. Yeah, um, unfortunately, okay. this is the Conservation Commission, so we're right. the only areas of expertise that we can speak right. to are those uh, wetlands and streams and creeks right. and their protective buffers. What about the front of my house? So that's so I just I just looked up. You're on Harbor Trace, so you don't have any um, 
wetlands or streams or anything within 100 feet of your property. Correct. So that's that's outside of our jurisdiction, so we can't comment. So what about damage to the property? When I believe that will all be right in, in the road, in the public road. Or at the, the end of the project, I think. But that, that is that doesn't have to do with us. But again, so. yeah, those would be concerns, unfortunately, that we just we don't well, who, have who knowledge. Would, who would um for, for concerns like that? So the water department is probably the best start, uh, even for that for damage yep. from yep. that that project. Yep. yep, they're the ones that are in charge and the in managing that project. Uh, it's under their department. Um, so the board of water commissioners or the water superintendent. Um, we'll be able to answer that. Okay, Early. so the state is paying for this project. Yes. I was kind of wondering about that. So I'm like, what about the infrastructure bills that have been passed and stuff like that? Why isn't that being paying for this type of thing? So that, that's right. Though. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not as much against it as it was then. <laughs> now I'm going to find out. <laughs> We just, I mean, I think ultimately you guys are all residents. You just, you want clean and safe drinking water. And that's oh, the yeah, I do, but not at the expense of me. Right. No, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's the new chemical that's been what? found. It's a new chemical, this PFAS, the yeah. PFAS. Yeah. Um, well, so, not ex or but, you're way more of an expert than but, I am. Yeah. Us, but, but, but so the state is, is, is promoting treatment. Okay. through different funding sources. Oh, okay. so maybe, maybe you could just stuff. give a quick 30 oh, okay. second synopsis of why this has become an issue within our state, because it's not just our community that's mm -hmm. facing this, it's all Massachusetts communities that have municipal water. Yeah. Um, Massachusetts and a couple other states have got, gotten out ahead of this um, and, and imposed some, some new regulations that um, dramatically decreased um, the level as well as they recently just started sampling for these, these chemicals and they're finding um, certain areas it's, it's quite a big problem. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, yeah, the Infrastructure Act, um, this, this project is being funded by that. Um, there's a significant, um, uh, you know, the entire project being funded by that. And there's a significant amount of um, grant that's being afforded the project as well as a slew of other things to, to help out financially. So it's um, and this is like a brand new chemical that it's been around since the 50s, unfortunately. Um, and it is um, sometimes you might see it in the, a news article, uh, a forever chemical. Um, that's kind of the PFAS is a kind of a, an acronym for the whole family of various ones that, that kind of roll up into that. And um, they were specifically developed. Um, for their benefits of like non-stick cookware and waterproofing and fire protection. They have a lot of uses. Yep. Yeah. It's in, use yeah, it's in that, yeah, it's that, yeah, that, dental floss. Brown paper floss that you get at the grocery store. Have to take that seriously. And and that's wrap why you bring your own bags. Yeah. Or wash. Makeup, yeah. Your rugs, your yep. step got in your rugs. So, so when you do your laundry and you have waterproofing or anything in your laundry, yep. it's going into your septic system, out your septic system, and into the groundwater. Yeah. Waterproofing? Yep. Yeah. On your clothing. Waterproofing, fireproofing. Oh, okay. Fast food wrappers. Fast it's really in everything. Yeah. Everything. But, yeah. And that's why we try, we're really adamant about particular um, protecting our waterways yeah. and wetlands in this general area because we are the headwaters of the Squanico National Waterfall. Right. This watershed and mm -hmm. it's um, it trickles down not far. Yeah. And um, you know, there's you, you, yeah, there's uh, stuff that happens upstream is what's causing a lot of problems downstream. Okay. So, so Andrea, you know to go to the town calendar and you can see all when the meetings are scheduled and um, I've, I've never Monday at seven. Monday at seven. Where? Is okay. that here? Yeah. Or... Um, so Zoom only, Dave. you yeah. Until the commissioners decide they want to meet in person. Today. So it's Zoom only now? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I haven't I mean I've been on the town website before, but I've never gone to like even considered even thought of going to any meetings or anything 
because I'm just doing my own thing, <laughs> you know, and I've never had a concern before. So, um, so I'll just have to find that. So there's. Uh, so if you go to the Townsend's website, yeah, you scroll down. There's an actual calendar on there. Mm -hmm. You pick the date. And it will show you what meetings there are, and yeah. it will open up another window, or it will take you. The link will take you to the listing, and it will pull up a PDF of um, the agenda. And oh, on okay. the agenda is another link for the Zoom meeting. All right. Um, so oh, okay. But you got to go to the calendar to do it still. Yeah, just yeah. go to the calendar, and they have yeah. the, they actually have Individuals. the agenda link and the Zoom link. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty you easy. Want to, as long as you have Zoom. Give me your email. I can send you that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jessica. While I'm here. <laughs> so, thank you. Sir and Madam in the rear, do you have something to say? They're next. They're for the next. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> um, so, if we don't have any other <laughs> comments, or is there any comments from people on Zoom? Um, Make a motion. Make a motion to close the hearing. No. Nope. Close the phone. To continue the hearing until <laughs> December 14th. Okay. We need a motion and a second, please. I would like to make a motion that we continue the hearing notice yeah. for the notice of intent for TWB 2022-139 till um, December 14th. Second. Second. Roll call, uh, roll call vote, please. Patricia Jones, yes. Joan Savoy, yes. James Gates, yes. Ann LaCuerre, yes. Linda Mack, yes. Colby Streeter, yes. So the hearing is continued to December 14th. Jessica will reach out to you with time and details. Um, and yeah, I should ask, sorry, maybe before we close, pause the hearing, are those who were not present at the site visit, are you guys interested in another site visit before the 14th? Yeah. I'd like to see yeah. where the plant's going. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, as long as there's plans that are a little more detailed, I'd be happy to go. Well, I'll, I'll talk with Julia, but yeah, let's, we'll plan on that another visit before the 14th then. Okay. And right. we're reasonably expecting that DEP number by the 14th. I yeah, we've already received some court, uh, uh, correspondence from them, so and we've already responded. Oh, so great. I would imagine it's any day now. Right. Because I didn't even see anything pending on the website. Yeah, uh, they've been a bit slow recently. Um, okay. But <laughs> yeah, we should we should have comments in a file number by the 14th. If we don't, then I would be very concerned. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Using someone emailed us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, we've had them where they come in that day, so mm -hmm. it, it, we don't want to. Yeah. Um, push it out if we don't have to. So, okay. Are you good, Jessica? I'm good. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Appreciate. Thank you. 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 Have a nice Thanksgiving. I do. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I miss the cat. I miss the kid. <laughs> two point two. Um, an appointment for uh, one fifty eight Main Street. Uh, Doc McGee. He's here, and we appreciate you right. joining us. If you don't mind, please. No. I did, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I do for you, and what questions do you have for me? So we received a, or I'll just keep going. Go for it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We received an, um, a complaint about the siltation washing out and it went down into the uh, culvert that goes into the rail trail. Yeah, um, I've been wondering that. So, and we know it's an agricultural field. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to 
come up with a, a game plan on how to prevent further washout and then a mitigation of how to. I think, I think we've, we've addressed uh, that with what I put hay bales out and stuff. I went through and uh, uh, had, had it Gary, seated twice. Yeah, had it seated twice. Gary Shepard told me that that uh, ditch, it was a ditch there before. I did the minimal amount there. It's a swale that's there now where there used to be a pretty good sized ditch there before. He said it should have been cleaned out. It should have been cleaned out for the last 40 years. It should have been cleaned out. I had someone that said that they were going to clean it out. Anybody here remember Paul McCold? Remember Paul? Yes, I do. Okay. Paul was a good guy. Uh, and when he when I bought the property from him, he says arrangements have been made and it's going to be taken care of and they're going to take care of the ditch. He says, I've already through uh, his work that he's done for this individual. He said that the ditch has been, he said ditch at the time. Uh, it's not a ditch now, it's a swale, but he said that it's, you know, already been taken care of. He says, so you don't pay for that because he says that's all agreed on. So I've been dealing with that for the last 15 years and nothing has got done, okay? And what happens is when you get into the fall season, when the rain starts and stuff, you can't get in there and I don't want to tear the hay field up and everything else. So. It hasn't been able to get done. So anyway, this year here, we were able to get it done and put it in. I seeded it and uh, with all the rain that we had, I lost all the seeds. So I lost the money there. Last Thursday, was it? Yes, last last Thursday. Thursday, I had it hydro seeded. So they heat hydro seeded the full lower part of it. The top part of it, there's water that comes onto my property there. Um, I don't know who, who goes out and investigates these things. I, I assume that it, it was you. Sometime I would like to get together with you and have it, and show you where all the water is coming out of my property. There is a culvert that comes under the road there, and I cleaned out around there the other day, and there's no water coming through that culvert. The water is coming out from behind the dentist office. Now, yeah. whether something has been done and has changed the water table there or stuff, mm -hmm. or it's coming out right under the, the building and stuff, and that's where all the water is coming from is there. Right, because there's I a ledge that a runs right through that. There's they that big ledge. There's a the water there. Right. We've been there for like 12, 13 years, I think, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And uh, so um, this is something that's come along recently, and the water was being held up the, at the top because there was grubs and stuff. And uh, what was the term that he used? Basically, tree vegetation, ball, roots, and tree, tree ball. Yeah. You know, root, yeah. root ball. I think yeah. it's a root ball. Yeah. So after they removed that and, uh, you know, had to open it up a little bit, uh, then the water has a way to get down underneath there. Um, Gary Shepard told me that I could use his name. And he said, he told me in the past that he said, there's, uh, there's a good culvert there at the end that's going to take care of your water problem there. But you definitely got to do the ditch. And I talked to Gary the other day when I got the letter from you. And he says, that should have been done for the last 40 years. That it was always a ditch there. And it should have been opened up. He says, I would open it up twice as wide, and twice as deep as what you did. I says, I'm trying to do it as minimal as I can and get it seated back so that I'm mm -hmm. not going to have a problem. And uh, I, the 28th, I got a text from Kevin and uh, he said that the pipe was half full of silk and this and that. I says, I just came from down there. I, we have pictures of that. And I says, I says it's, it's, not, it's not half full of, of silk. When we went down there that day and put out hay bales and, and actually the same day that I got the letter, I think. Is it 28th we got the letter? We got the letter last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. I think I mailed it on. Well, it was the 20th. Yeah. I think that was the day that you so said you did Wednesday. an inspection. I don't know whether. Uh, we walked down there the, the Friday. Friday the. Said the 28th. Twenty. We went out the 20, Friday the 25th. I mailed the letter yeah, we just, on Monday. And we only came, we looked at it from the rail trail. What, yeah. what time of day was that? It was 10 o'clock. No, you must have been there just before we went down there <laughs> because I went down there and we put the hay bales out and stuff. And uh, well, that was after Kevin, Kevin's right. Back, we did the hay bales, right? Then we got the letter on Wednesday, so Friday we went down. And, yeah, and I, I called Kevin and asked because yeah. I know he, he does your hang, yeah. So he has in the past, yeah. right? We put more hay bales, so we put more hay bales, then we put more hay bales down last, what was that, last Thursday, Friday, Friday, last Friday. No, and then I took, the... and I, I got pictures of that too. I had a big uh, 12 foot handle like you use for cleaning out a sewer with the end of the uh, spade is, is bent like this. And I went from both ends of that and pulled it out. And I measured how much silt there was in the ditch at the time, which I have pictures of before and afterwards. There was an inch of silt in the front of it. There was maybe two, no, maybe three inches on the, on the back side of it. I pulled all of that out of there. 
we put more hay bales and stuff out and that's that's what I, I've done. Yeah, I think the okay. hydro seed is taking any time. The hydro seed should be kicking in. We put down last Thursday. We were hoping since yeah, after tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. The rain yeah. probably started now. We, the guy that put it in said it's but the rain unless we get torrential rains. But yeah. Uh, and the cold oh, isn't always good. So I, I went down there to look at it. Um, I actually just went for a walk yesterday on it. And um, the hay bales, I would say, um, are not put in properly to keep the silt from coming down the stream. You have the hay bales on the side. I don't know, Jessica, if you can put the photos up. Harley, can I have screen sharing permission, please? It's probably so soft in there. You probably. No, it's not on the end. Well, it depends. No. I mean, it depends I, I, what kind of I, I, I'll do anything <laughs> I got it that would, would no, just, make you happy. Just let us know what no. we change. We'll uh, change we, it. The hydro, the hydro seating should kick in and that should take a hold. Yeah. A lot of, I hate as long as it gets stabilized, that'll stop it. But in the interim, I think we do need to have some hay bales up. And then uh, once it's stabilized, you can remove them. Okay. okay. Uh, I gave uh, I gave a uh, Jessica the. Uh, the power okay. to screen share. So. I saw that. Thank you. Okay, so um, the hay bales shouldn't be on the side. They should be across okay. where the water is. Okay. Oh, yeah. The, okay. Seed, okay. the seed okay. is taking. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. You can right. tell, yeah. I, think, yes. I, mean, I, will, I will throw in, though, too, that this is a mapped stream or wetland or whatever. So we don't want to completely block the flow of water by putting hay bales totally across it all you can see you the, still need to be able to hydrate the rest of it i can so. see where the water is, is going down and it's maybe about this wide it, it's it, it's got cut its own path down yeah there. i can put everything up at the edge of that if that's what you'd like so I, 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 I think but it, it does water. need to stop the um siltation so, somehow jessica yeah. oh, the hay bales so it's a temporary that's measure oh uh, the water I'll grab that so you want I, I think just a row yeah. of hay bales at the bottom, so you want them right to go, across the. You want okay. to go this way. Yep. Yeah. Right, right across, across. all the way across. On the, on the side of the rocks where her hand is. That's so we'll what you want. Way. And then uh, with the rain, with the two or three inches of rain coming, I would yeah. go two with hay bales past where the water is running. Okay. But go right through the water because it will catch the yeah, sails will catch it. And then once the It'll grass happen. comes up, you can cut the hay bales and just pull them yeah. okay. and then halfway up just to slow that water down. Sure. Yeah, I'll address that. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. Um, Jessica, can you also take the photo of the stream where they're on the side of the stream further down? Um, <clears throat> Friday night. So, so these the, these don't really um, need to be here. You can use these for the other because these are on the banks and that's not where the siltation is coming from. The, the, the we got heavy the, rain the at banks the banks on the water. No. Oh, in. Okay. It's just yeah, a no. little bit of that, sure. yeah, you know, it, it's such a long run. No. So we right. can move those up, up further to the first picture. Yeah, so I'll take care of that. We'll get it taken care of the long run. There, there, there was two cut-throughs, if I remember correctly, coming from the the hay fields and i don't know i don't know exactly why he did that did that uh like, sure. that's where the water was coming but in the past uh um he, he put a couple of rocks there because in the past i've had people come in there and they they think that they can go anywhere that they want with it with with right. snowmobile. Yeah. and you come in there and you know i got a lot of expensive horses that are there we raise babies there and uh you know they said we put that there. I didn't even ask them to do that. That's what they did. And they said the reason they did that was so that snowmobiles and stuff would be coming on the property. But that's yeah. that'll all fill in anyway. I mean, just period yeah. of time that'll fill itself in, you know. So in that that go if you are you talking about the other dugout place now? Yeah. So that yeah, that's on the rail trail property too. So I don't know if we want to have that. Um, like, like, I don't think I don't think no, it's no, I don't, think, I don't think it's on the rail trail. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's, a no, 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 I, no, I'm saying it's on the rail trail property. It's not on the rail trail itself, but it's on the property. And so that needs to be, I think, restored with some uh, vegetation or something because it's been just... We can, we can break some hay Can you show that photo, Jessica, since we're talking about that now? Have that one. I know what you're, I know what you're talking about. 
you it's, know. it's like the other break in the woods, though. Right. So it should be yeah. like maybe 30 ish feet down. Yeah. Like, do you want us to plant something there? Uh, I think it'll do probably we, have it. Jessica, can you show the like, photo? She doesn't have one, have Linda. But it was there photo. when I looked earlier. Okay. Is there? Yeah. Sorry. I, I saw it. But are you, are you thinking about um, cleaning out that swale more, especially especially because of the water up top behind I'm the I'm dentist office? That, I'm hoping that the grass is going to take, and that's the way that it, the way it is, and the way it's going to be. Yeah, because there's a good vein of ledge that goes through there. I, I, have you walked the rail trail? No, no, not since I took my horse out there before they made the rail trail. Even so, here now, like, <laughs> but there's the old cut where the uh, from the tracks where there's ledge on both sides. Mm -hmm. and there's there's veins of ledge that go through there. I know when we did the water line going up, really roadie. I'm sure you could oh. hear the hammering. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. ledge that goes. No, where, where was that? I, I thought is that anywhere near the area we're talking about? No, it's, it's no, further no. down. It's further down, right? It's further down. Yeah, and yeah. it's, it's further towards yeah. the west, but it's still within. Right, it's yeah, maybe a hundred yards away. It's not that far. Right, there's a lot of ground. Yeah, this is it. There. Thanks, Jessica. I just save it in the folder. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. So the <laughs> reason, like this, was that, um, that's the same picture. That, no, it's not. Isn't it? It's, it's not. Picture? It's the other one. Okay. The other picture. Yeah, so the this picture. is further east from where we were looking before, um, and this ditch is on the um, rail trail property. Okay. 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 So um somehow it needs to be probably, you know, restored to what it was with some vegetation filled back in. Because well, it's not it doesn't look like it's doing any um uh, drainage. I don't even know why they did that, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. So we you know, he might as well put it back for the so that there isn't that big ditch there. Yeah, and vegetate it again. The rail trail. But the rail trail didn't do it. No, mm -hmm. well, it, it, there's all these drainage swales through there from the railroad ends. Um, yeah, so this, in terms of where that rock is, that's, that was that's my place. property from where that rock is coming coming towards the front. Yeah, of the yeah. They, they, they right. made, they're saying they did this here. Right, it, but yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is that from where that rock is back toward me, that is our yeah. property. Right. That's your property, yeah. But from the rock forward um, towards the rail trail, that's their property. Okay. So that was all invasives in there. Um, oh, good. So we can put in some. Uh, well, I, I, we can open it up for discussion. I think it will grow It'll back be. just fine. I do too. Um, but it needs to be filled in, don't you think? I mean, it's changing uh, the topography. It looks to me. It, it, just, it, it connects into the drainage swales, the rail. Drainage soils that were there, right on the side of the rail trail is the ditch all the way down. Right, and that's that's been there since they put the railroad in. Right. Um, yeah, if, if if she wants us to put some more hay from there somewhere, I, mean, I, I would definitely put hay bales through there just to slow right. down. Can we open the hay bales there so that no, land in down. the trench. Okay, it's just to slow down the right. water coming down. But okay. Yeah, just because input would be. That's fine. And then we can talk. I, no, I think that's fair. I mean, I, I agree. This will very likely revegetate itself. And it doesn't look like there's, I mean, it's a hard time of year to know, but right. I don't spring, know if there are any. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think it'll revegetate. It's just a weird time of year. Right. It looks so naked and exposed right, right now. Right. All the and all the and everything fall there. Yeah. yeah. And and it doesn't, so I know it's going to revegetate. That's not my point. I just think digging out a ditch like that um you know it just needs to be filled back in that's all it looks to me looking at the picture it looks like the ditch is more on this side it's not you, wait a minute when you go to the other side i don't think there's much of a ditch there i will look at it i will no i, will I yeah i'm just saying on the um you can do what you I'm, like on your property but i think on the rail trail property it needs to be restored here right. I think that, that I your propose that we contact the rail trail contacts instead of assuming. Um, if this is not, I don't think so. I I think you know you know we just need. I'm, they're happy to do it. They're not. It's not a huge job. 
I don't know why we need to. I mean, I am a board member on, on there, and I can contact them if you want. But um, I would we'll imagine put we'll put hay bales and stuff in there tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. For yeah, for the, our conversation right now, Linda, it, um, that we try to figure out how to prevent any more washouts. I'm trying to think. Um, so it's in our area's jurisdiction, though. Right. And if this isn't jurisdictional, then we can. Right. It's, it's in the. It is. I don't know. It is. There is. It is a drainage. Wetland vegetation is there. That was. Yeah, that's. Okay. We had to do wetland with, uh, restoration in there. But, you know, there were soil or trenches cut through there. All throughout yeah. there, and there, there's no wrong reason really. It's just whatever the railroad did at the right. time, and yeah. previous owners of your farm, and whatever right. worked. I mean, I'm sure that there's areas that are, I haven't done anything with that up there, but there are some, like you said, if there's if an opening to let the water go down back there. Yeah, and there's like the pools the, uh, for the water to drain to the one side of the property. There's like there's several like that you're talking about. Yeah. It's like random stuff on the list. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. they find like an old piece of equipment or something. Yeah, there's some mm -hmm. stuff up there that were left in the farms oh. probably in the late 1800s. Probably. Oh, I guess other discussion amongst the commission and the comments, Pat, Joan. Good. Thank you. No. Uh, whatever, whatever is going to make you happy, I will, I will do it. But it was the point, magic words. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But, and we, yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah. And I saw that you dug out the silt, so that was great when yeah. I went there. Yeah. Thank you for you know, doing uh, that. But I must be right. That was done the very day that I heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> I go to the and that was the day. first conversation we had was this is agriculture we want to sure Maybe at one point, Jim, if you if you're one of the ones that go up and look at things, uh if you just come and look so that I can show you where the water is all coming from. I don't understand where it's coming from. Maybe that can be addressed at one point. Yeah, I think we, that's a good point. I think we need to that's go. Where all the water is coming from. I never had this water before. Yeah. You know? when, did it, when did it start, if you, do you remember? It's been going on for a while because they had water in their cellar and everything there. The dentist's office okay. did. The previous, the, the, pre the, the previous, previous owner was, well, yeah, was the very, previous well, dentist? very willing to do whatever he wanted like to do. And he, and he was a good guy, uh, uh, Rose Bush, that was there. Mm -hmm. And he had trouble there. And he's been after me forever. And then this dentist came along. She knew that the agreement that was with Rose Bush, and he was willing to pay for some of the half of it is what he said and if you call him on the phone and tell you that now which everything has been out of my pocket i haven't been helped at all and uh, uh he they felt that it was coming because the ditch wasn't active as, as it used to be mm -hmm. and uh she moved in she wanted to get the ditch taken care of she called a couple of times and i tried and tried and tried to get the Get it done. Never had a dry year. And this was like the best it, year it, it, it had it done. Wasn't getting done. Yeah. No, no, you didn't yeah. get any. It was perfect. It was going to get yeah. done, but it never got done for fifteen years. Yeah. Done. Okay. And, so, and then it rained. Right. <laughs> it was a great drought. All of a sudden, when you did open it up, so the water had some place to go, it relieved the problem up there. And there's still all the water is coming from someplace there. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know where it's coming from. Is there, yeah, right? Can I make a recommendation that um, that we do a site inspection of the culvert above uh, where it's draining into his uh, property? Because maybe even across the street, there's something funky. Oh, there's a cul there is a culvert there. And I, yeah. I opened it up so you can see it, and there's it's no dry. water coming through that culvert. It's mm -hmm. coming from the back of the building. Huh. Must go I know, but, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe there's something wrong with the other side of the culvert that the water should be draining through the culvert. Maybe it's getting redirected for some you, reason. You might be right. I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not right. Yeah, but I, that's why I think if we go and look at it, we'll also be able yeah. to see if it's, that it's coming out of the You basement. would know better than I would. I just, yeah. All I know is that like along Gary's farm stand, like behind it, they did road work a few months ago. And there's a septic replacement this, at this, the residential place across the street. So was, I was just wondering if it's something this, like this hitting the water. On, this was going on. <laughs> well, no. Hey, no, no, that water means brand new. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have been <laughs> going on. Water means over there. 
Gary did the culvert, yeah, not culvert for those water main and stuff. This well, that was the town. That. The town did the water main. That had nothing to do with Gary. Um, uh, I think Gary. Well, he was the contract. He was working for the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That that has nothing to do with it. This was no. going on before they ever touched. That it. might be a highway, right? Yeah, yeah Jim Smith, but I know that that cut to the west of this um, on the rail trail during after heavy rains and especially over the winter there's a foot of ice in there yeah because of the groundwater there's a where, lot. where's that the, end? the west side of um your property where there's the cut uh i call it cut it, but there's this big bump of ledge uh, that, oh yeah i know where it is yeah there. where the, the big there's a big house up on the hill there uh there's yeah a big, there's a big ledge and then there's a big house yeah. up and that there. goes all the way down through right across the rail trail right. and there's the we call like i said the cut because they can't or they blasted or pickaxed all this all the ledge out of there for the rail um to go through and that whole held a lot of water um so it, it's probably groundwater coming up that might be where the groundwater comes out yeah yeah um, there could be yeah there i know there's ledge um up really road and uh it's close to the surface uh -huh. so where really so if you go up to the north so the old president mansion there's a vein vein of ledge that comes down through um through here yeah well there and then if you go up past um gary's farm stand between one greeley there's an intermittent ledge all the way up the side of the road and it's you know profiled going right across um you know i know there's two dug wells up at gary's in the in the spring there's one right at where gary's driveway starts where the water will overflow that dug well mm -hmm. um now that makes sense that that's where it's yeah, but this is continual it's not like seasonal this is continuing there's a lot of is there a but there is a stream like you said yeah so this well, might be the, 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 where the groundwater comes up but the, would the stream be where the culvert is underneath the road would that be where the stream is mm. this is this is like uh 50 feet or maybe further than that over from where the culvert is it's coming yeah. underneath the building yeah well, it's it's over here. Here. It's huh? it may have diverted itself it. that stream but that's what i mean like maybe something's going on on, on the other yeah. side of the road well, but you have this stream that's on, on mass mapper that is identified, and I know it start says it starts at the culvert, but you can see on the on the map um, from whenever this was taken. This is twenty twenty one. You know this this wet spot where it's almost like a pond, yeah, um, right behind the dentist's office. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that just might be if you dig down there, I bet you it's all ledge. Could that possibly be? You know, when, when you come out and look at it could it possibly be the septic system that's coming out under there because the septic system is right in the front of the dentist office it's in the front it's right in the front of the dentist office uh, oh. it, uh it. It, was it recently put in like in the last oh, five been, years it's been there but the the water was being held up there because of the the root balls and stuff was holding everything up there now that mm -hmm. you've opened it up you can see that the water is all coming out of there yeah so that blue line is like a stream that's like documented. Yeah. 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 I mean, it wouldn't just be roof water runoff from the dentist. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Okay. This this is is wet out there now. This is the the water. This is it's all it's constant. Yeah. Just in that area. It's, 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 it's yeah. always wet. So there is, there is a culvert in this? It was on the edge of her driveway, driveway which I went in there with brush fog and there was all kinds of vines and all kinds of stuff there, which I opened up the other day because Gary told me that there was one there. I said, I don't see the call here anyplace. He said, no, he says, go right to the edge of the, her, her driveway, which is my driveway. She's got the driveway on my land. And right at the edge of the driveway, it's right there. Well, I couldn't see it because there was so much uh, uh, overgrowth and all kinds of stuff there. So I brush hogged it all out of there so you can see it right now. But so, there's nothing coming out of that. And I'm pretty sure the inlet for, actually for that is up behind the farm stand yeah i think so too but right no the farm the 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 culvert yeah. is some like perched groundwater that it's, right. it's sitting and cooling on top of some soil or bedrock or something that's not allowing it to soak 
through. It's probably something like that, which is why James name Ledge. Ledge is like impenetrable. Right, right. right. Well, but it's actually, there's also clay through there. Right. And but they also and it's, I know when they did the swale down through there, it said, I figured we were going to hit all kinds of rocks and stuff, and there was, there was no rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was probably a clay sand. So I know when we I dug for the water line, there was hard clay sand. It yeah. was hard. Um, I mean, like glacial erratic, that stuff? No, it wasn't glacial till. Till, that stuff's um, nasty. Is that a possibility that sometime you might come and I can show you what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think any, that'd be great. Any any morning, you know, we're there every morning and, you know, drive right down the driveway and you can walk right over there or you can drive right in the driveway at the dentist office and you can look and see where it's all coming in. We can walk right over right behind the dentist office because that's my property there too. And right. you'll see where it's all coming. Yeah, that's a great idea. Hey There's folks, no at, at, at the sake of being abrupt, <laughs> <laughs> have we satisfied the wetland yeah. violations with 158 Main Street? <laughs> Not to rush yeah. things along, but... Uh, Nice getting up. Thanks, Paul. I think so. And Dr. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that. the I appreciate so, all the ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So no. if, if Jess, Jessica can make a time that we can all kind of go there, or those of us that want to. Yeah. Give me my cell phone and call me. Yeah, I'll take yeah. cell phone and email, whatever it needs you. Okay. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. you guys do I, and I'll do the hay tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. So you. Much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Great Thanks. We'll yeah, see you. Appreciate it. All right. Um, so uh, 3.0 work session um, request for one year OOC extension for 27 scales lane TWB 2019-156. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. So scales land, you said they'd satisfied the um where it were in 3.0. Um okay. Um okay. Um, scales? Yeah. Yes. So um they requested an extension back in like April, I wanna say. Um and at that point I looked. And they did not record their order of condition and all the erosion barriers had already been removed right. from the property, even though they still had work to do. So I requested that both those get done. So he went out and put back silt fence or straw waddles um, pretty immediately. And then just last week or the week before, they did go and record the order of conditions. So they are compliant with their order of conditions. And so I believe they are eligible for their one year extension. extension. So there's, so there is no, and here's the DEP number. There is no DEP number for this. So this property only has isolated wetlands. When they're isolated wetlands, they're only regulated at our town level, not at the state level. So this DEP file number? It's probably wrong. Okay. So I can make a motion um, on this, James? Only one year? Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. I, I think they just need to do landscaping. Yeah. But just one year. Thanks. They requested one year, so we will honor that. Just one year. <laughs> that's they they wrote that as one year. year. There's a certain house on Pierce Road that might be coming back and more after well, a one year. <laughs> one year. <laughs> okay, that's what Brett wants. I make a motion that um, we grant the request for a one year OOC extension for 27 Scales Lane TWB 2019 156. Second. Um, the only comment I have is well, on here you have six twelve twenty two for the um, beginning of the requested extension time. Is it based on today? Um, or the filing, whatever. It expired then. Okay. So I think that's when I initiated their one year extension. Does he know that? They should. One year? Jinx. <laughs> 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 clearly diligently following up with them. Why not just do 
but no price difference. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it, as long as he gets his buffer work done, then he can, you know, that's the first that he should tackle. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Patricia Jemmel, yes. Savoy, yes. James Gates, yes. Anna LaCroix, yes. Linda Mack, yes. Colby Strader, yes. And those are in there for you guys to find tonight, too, if you want to leave those out. All right. Uh, 3.2 Certificate of Compliance Request for Six Ball Road, DEP number 308 0673. Um, Jessica, I assume you checked it out and I did. Yeah, I went out last week and it was stable. The grass has grown in despite the drought. And one of their other conditions was to replant the bank of the pond with native wetland vegetation. Let me guess, it grew back. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, all stable. They did work according to their corrected order of conditions after an enforcement last year. So good. we are good. Good. I think good to close it out. Good. Did they initiate this or did we? I did. <laughs> hmm. mm -hmm. So we need a motion, a second, please. Motion to grant certificates of compliance. For Six Ball Road, DEP 308-0673. One second. Roll call vote, please. General, yes. Savoy, yes. James Gates, yes. Yeah, Corey, yes. Linda Mack, yes. Coley Streeter, yes. Uh, mandatory referral notice for ZBA regarding 75 Pierce Road. Um, so, trying to, accessory apartment. Yeah. Jessica, is there anything for, that is jurisdictional? Um, no. The only comment I had, I told Beth earlier, is that question number four on their application states are there any brooks, streams, swamps, bogs, lakes, ponds, or other wetlands on the lot or within 100 feet of the lot? They answered no. The answer should be yes. Um, but still, where the placement of their accessory apartment is proposed will be outside of any of the buffers off of those features. So should we include that in our comment or? I would. Okay. Otherwise, they would not need to file. So comment is item number four should be marked yes, not no. OK. Um, are you making a motion? Uh, I'm making I'm making a suggested comment. You're right. We... Do I have to motion that? It says votes may be taken. We have in the past historically. I make a motion that the Conservation Commission comments that item number four should be checked yes, but it does not impact the application. Nonetheless, here to four. Second. Roll call vote. Just the gentleman, yes. Savoy, yes. James Gates, yes. Yeah, Aquarius. yes. Linda Mack, yes. Colby? I didn't go through. You're holding us up there, Colby. <laughs> oh, he, he, you muted yourself. I'm going in reverse for some reason. So, yes. Okay. Um, Thanks for picking up on that, Jessica. Mm -hmm. yes. 
By the way, do you know how to read those hydro cat? Uh, yeah. Wow. Hold on. No. Oh, my spelling's right. <laughs> They just read it into the record, so you're good. <laughs> I hope it's legible. That should be your main concern. <laughs> Mandatory referral notice for planning board regarding proposed zoning bylaw amendments to 145-42 and 145-54.1. Uh, well, those were the red lines copies we got yeah I didn't have any concerns Jessica did you pick up on anything I did not I'm sure it done yeah this has to can we already talk about this it's different they're coming in fast and furious. Hmm. So they're going to take the. They reduce it from two acres down to one. So it's located. Yeah, then there's the we, ground mounted solar. We did look at some of the comments before, but they have added more. So. Yeah. Applicable strict adherence to Chapter 85 of Townsend General Bylaws, DP, DES, Phase 2 Stormwater Management Plan, and its associated regulations should be required to struck out when they added um, for to 175 44 stormwater management, erosion, and sedimentation control plan, stormwater plan to determine requirements with strict, strict adherence to Chapter 85. So they're just combining them. I don't see anything. Anyone comments, concerns? I didn't see anything that jumped out. Oh yeah, this says the the conservation researching here. We talked about this. All right, so motion in a second, please. I make a motion. We um, uh, have no comment on the mandatory referral, referral referral notice from the planning board regarding proposed zoning bylaw amendments to 145-42 and 145-54.1. Second. Roll call vote. Patricia Jamoy, yes. Savoy, yes. James Gates, yes. Yeah, Linda Mack, yes. Colby Streeter, yes. All right. Um, review of Townsend Wetlands Bylaw Chapter 150 4 through Appendix. I can barely see those in here. Is that better? Mm. Okay. All right, so this is the end of it. So 150-4 is procedures in our regulation section. Um, they just outline the procedures for a determination of applicability and a notice of intent and an order of condition. Um, I just am proposing some edits because it's a named document, so just capitalizing it appropriately. Um, determination of applicability, as you know, is our is our response document 
to a request for a determination of applicability or the RDA. So um, in the RDA, an applicant can request if work they're proposing or a location proposed for work at their property is subject to regulation by Conservation Commission or by the State Wetland Protection Act. So I clarified that they can request if it is jurisdictional under the state rule on here. That notice of intent, I have not made any significant changes here. Um, yeah, no, no changes, just the procedure. I mean, that hasn't changed forever. So I do want to change our procedure in our bylaw, chapter 138, um, because it's very confusing in there. But in our regulations here, it seems a little bit more organized. So is it true you want, you're going to underline the word estimate in B1? No, that's just. It's just there. The view suggestions. I don't know. Ignore. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Okay. So security. <clears throat> um, I talked about bonds. Again, I know we had some extensive discussions about those yeah. previously. Um Again, a lot of just procedure stuff in here too about um, issuing documents. So all the dates need to be consistent with the day that it's handed to the resident or um, postmarked via certified mail. Uh, emergency is as defined in 138-3 of the bylaw, but you guessed it, it's not defined there. So, oh. um, I'm also saying, if necessary, a resident or firm can request an emergency certification from the commission. Why did I write that though? That's nice. Pink cut. Why did I write that though? I'll show you 138-3. Okay. Yeah, 138-3. Oh, okay. Does not define an emergency project, mm -hmm. really. Um, it defines it only referring to national law. I think we'll leave it like that. Um, yeah. How do we get back to the screen? Is it called an emergency certification or an emergency certificate? Oh, uh, I always knew it as an emergency certificate. I thought it was certification. Um, I, yeah, I mean, maybe. I, I just well, I'll, check, I'll check on that. That's a good. Yeah. But whatever it is, I can, I'll change it to that. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'll check that. Okay. Um, otherwise, again, just capitalizing things a little bit. Um, I did notice, which I, I have missed before, that an enforcement order, so in, just for you guys to know, um, it does need to be issued on the appropriate WPA form. Yeah. But as such enforcement order may be issued to any person who, as determined by one or more members of the commission upon inspection, someone who violates our bylaw, the enforcement order may be issued by one or more members of the condition and it just needs to be ratified at the next meeting. Hmm. So mm -hmm. I thought that I was the only one who right. could do those. Right. Um, but no. You, but yeah. I mean, well, I mean, right. when you think about it, um, the Conservation Commission, that's our job, really. Okay. But we give it to you, Jessica, to do, but it Things should be ratified because it's really our job. We're supposed to be voting on these things. That's what I, why I was asking that. But it does make sense if you just send a letter. We don't need to ratify it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if we do an enforcement order, we should. Then then that bodes the question: Do we include an enforcement order form with letters, or is it too heavy-handed? You know. I 
put in yet because a lot of it too is again just educating at the beginning a lot of people probably don't know that they're doing anything wrong right right um, but you know if you're driving down the road and somebody is out in his excavator literally digging up his lawn and dumping it into the wetland that's a different story um yeah i think a lot of people just don't know they're actually violating yeah, I mean, some do. It depends. You know, you get to know the ones that do know, and they're just trying to do it when nobody's looking. I remember, I'm not going to tell a story. I was going to tell a story, James, but I'm not going to. Because it's not story time. But Colby's happy about that. <laughs> I just, I mean, I just know from, like, as just a, a human homeowner perspective, too. You know, you work during the day. So a lot of times people are going to be doing this stuff on the weekends. And I'm not right. here I'm driving around looking for trouble. So I, I don't know. think any of us are look or not. look not. You don't want to. Yeah. Oh, but God, you no. would see it because generally people are home on the weekends and that's when they tackle projects. So yeah. um, no, no. You have the power. There's to only a few them. people that will drive around looking for. <laughs> and a couple. But I'm not one of them. Anyway, fun, fun fact for a commissioner. Yeah, no, I've done quite a few of those, believe me, in my time. So, but I would. If no you story really time. Not that. telling a story. <laughs> if, you, if you are interested in, you know, in potentially policing more, just yep. read the regulation before. Exactly. Because otherwise that could be a lawsuit, so. Yeah, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, does this this also bodes the question who who has gotten training on particularly enforcement? Because it is a, its own. It was its own. Um, yeah, class. Training. I don't remember if I did it. Yeah. Because I think it is important. I mean it. Because in a way, we should be doing it. That's our job, you know, when we say we will, you know, when we get sworn in and we say we'll do this. So if we are driving around, say, not looking for things, but we happen upon something, right? we are required to, to stop and talk to the person and tell them they have to stop work right now and all that whole thing. So I just wondered if anybody else has had enforcement training on that if that's a class that may cc offers yeah yeah I, yeah. I also I yeah i i did too but following our bylaws and just being using common common sense yeah yeah Jessica, use, have you taken it i took the course yeah and i've, I've reviewed the manual as well yeah. Good. Yeah, it's like its own manual of enforcement. Right. So, if anyone's interested, it's available. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and all these resources are available. Yep. Um, on MACC website, um, yes. and as yeah. members, we have access to it all. Um, but I know we've talked about it already. If you don't feel comfortable approaching someone about it, that you know. Some, someone else on the commission can do it if it's out, off hours or contacting Jessica. Who was yeah. sending out the pregnant lady? Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's better to do it in twos. It's never good to do it alone. That's a good That's suggestion. Right. That's Only because you don't know. I mean, most 99% of the time, people are friendly, like, you know, the people tonight, but sometimes people cannot be friendly and, you know, it could be dangerous. <laughs> That's true. Be careful. Uh, I, I no, we have the option if we don't feel safe to have the police mm -hmm. um, be involved. Yeah. I, I don't remember where I work, read it from, but I do remember. I think it was in the bylaws. Yeah, we've had this discussion. Uh, we've had before. this discussion before. I think, yeah, maybe it was last time even. Yeah, someone who is an actual enforcement officer yes. is me. I'm not that scary. Um, police or the building commissioner. Yes. yes. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. I, mean, I wouldn't like to recommend myself. 
in a scary situation, but no, um, I wouldn't even do it if no. it's, if I. Oh, but that would be it, like your buddy. Read, saying, but into something, yeah. like, you know, you can usually tell, but regardless, okay, yeah. we'll keep moving. So, anywho, that was the fun sure. fact. Um, section five is just the validity standard. I'm not going to change that. And then our appendix forms here are just as referenced in the procedure that we just went through. Um, are those links on the website? No, they're not. So that was one of my um, comments was, should we add in hyperlinks? For Just, yeah. Jessica, in your appendix forms list, though, your caps aren't consistent with the way you change the caps up top. Like, you know, you change the yeah. order capital. Good catch. Um, that's what I'm saying. Okay. That's something that I would have picked up on. It would be really crazy. <laughs> Good catch. Okay, so there's that. Uh, anyway, no, they are not. Um, they're not hyperlinks. I think they should be hyperlinks. I agree that they should be yeah. hyperlinks. That would be great. Searching for it. Yeah. So that would be on uh, if they're if they are hyperlinked, that'll just be on us to make sure that they are the mm -hmm. most up to date forms, though, too. There we go. Um, let's see, add hyperlinks. Um, our website, it's more just stuff that we need to mail out with the town clerk or internally, but our the website has our fee schedule, I think, set as both of these. So we need to get that updated. Um, I actually think I'm going to remove my comment for because to me, it was if someone's coming to our regulations for guidance, why do they need to have access to our response forms? We should only have our application forms on there. Right. Good really point. Forms. I mean, want to have that. I mean, it's all public anyway. So. Yeah. Probably don't want to change it more if it you know hasn't been an issue in the past. Um, and then my only other addition comment was if you guys are interested in putting in some protected something about the ACEC. That's always like uh I, I don't know Jones thoughts, but that's always a like, uh, surprise. Don't forget we're in the ACEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think it should be there. I'm very interested in that. Absolutely. It's only in like the zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. It's just somewhere weird and irrelevant almost. Right. Yeah. Um, so I know we had Nancy Putnam come and talk to us months ago about ACEC, and the, it really is more of a protection that we can put into our permits when it's in the jurisdiction area. In the fee schedule, so yeah. there's a little something there. Mm -hmm. But so. yes, <laughs> but I don't think we can generate regulations for its protection, but we can generate. Well, we know, actually issuing an order of a condition, order of conditions for a property within the ACs. They, you can ask for more planting. You know, instead yeah. of planting at a one to one, three planting at a two to one, or something. You know. Yeah, I more protection. Know, what the other towns have done right. for it, and just in my opinion, um, copying it. Yeah, we're not the first ones. Joan, you had something. Oh uh, no, it's say? gone. But thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it, I it came. I tossed it around. I threw it away. Wow. It's gone. I know the ACEC is your. It's my thing. It's one of my things. It was, I mean, the state puts a lot of weight. Yeah. Uh, except regulatorily. Also, which in is our, odd. In our um, in the zoning, that it is, it is a link to zoning bylaw. Okay. It's the uh, <clears throat> Cook ACEC. It's not even the right name. It's Squanatissit. Squanatissit. Yeah, yeah, you got it. In our, in our, right. In right. Our, it says Squanatissit. Squanatissit. <laughs> Ouch. So, do you yeah. have anything you want to add to this or questions or? Good. Mm -hmm. No. 
there's more for us to look at, right? I think this is it. This is it. Oh. I think what my next plan is, um, is to meet with town council, similar to what I did with chapter 138. I'll meet with him for 150 review, just to make sure we're not opposing anything outrageous. Okay. Um, and then just sort of start to actually tackle. So I think that's what I was, when I was looking at these, um, I saw something about that you were talking to town council and there was something about um, issuing tickets and fines. Yeah. Okay, so um, my question was about, do you have the form to issue a ticket? No, I do not. You don't. Huh. Really? Where did that go? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be in the depths somewhere in our office. Okay. No, I used to use it uh, when I was the agent. So that's why I'm like, this? Okay. So maybe it disappeared. <laughs> but usually you, you, yeah, when, I listed my letters in the interim, but no, I wasn't. I wasn't even aware of, of like the ticket booklet. So yeah. until I went to town council, so it was similar yeah. to like what a policeman gives out. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Jessica with her little. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So that is somewhere, but but you might as well make new ones. Why not? They are probably pretty ancient anyway. So. Yeah, that's what I mean. Again, what's what are other municipalities doing? Yeah, you know, typically, it, when was the last time the conservation commission issued a fine? Probably since I was on it. <laughs> since I was there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know. That's a long time ago. And yeah, that's something I remember we talked about during ch our chapter 138 review was that you can issue a fine of up to $300 per right. offense right. per day. day. Um, right. Correct. So, so if someone has been digging and they also had a violation where the digging, what the siltation came, that's too... Um, you don't want to call them violations. You can't want to call them what? Offenses. Yeah, but Offenses. then you want to try Offenses to work too. with them. So you're going to combine it anyways. Well, right. of course you want to try to work with people. This is really rare situations where you're not, you know, the person isn't wanting to work with the commission, you know, where they're just right. saying, I'm going to do it. You know, sorry. At that point, are you so far along that DEP is involved? Right. Um, and then, you know, so it, yeah, it becomes, you add on a bunch of, so it could be, you know, sometimes, you know, $1,200 a day. And as long as they're not doing what you're asking them to do, it, it just is happening. So, but it's a rare occurrence. I mean, most people are pretty compliant. I think if you're having people like that, who you're tacking on multiple $300 a day, they're not going to pay. So at that point. No, they do. I mean, I, I had to do it a couple of times and they did pay and we went to court. And in addition to the tickets, as the commission, you guys have the authority to right. serve them to the a court. Right. Too. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, $25,000. You know, versus the going to court, you know. But hopefully, we don't ever cross that bridge. Hey, Jessica, right. when you're with Adam, would you please ask him, because I know he serves like 28 towns, if he knows of any of the other towns he works with, that they have any type, they've crafted any specific language specific to the ACEC protection. That, that, because, you know, Nancy Putnam was supposed to get me some stuff, and I reached out to her okay. twice, and I never heard back. So yeah. uh, I'd yeah. just be well, interested. Well, yeah. well, I mean, he may have come across something. Thank you. Okay. But I mean, again, because it's the state regulation, we can't it really make our own new one. Yeah. But, well, but the state has has nothing. I mean, it just says very important, I mean, yeah. but there's no right. nothing. No, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think as again, as an educational thing, we want to um, we want to reference it, you know, because your project is in the ACEC, we want to see thus and such, you know. 
I mean, we can reference it, and we should. Yeah, the um, I, I do want to add, but yeah, the the uh, PFAS is a ACEC territory. Okay. PFAS. Okay, moving forward. That. We're done with that? Yeah. Cool. Great work. You graduated. Thank you. That feels good. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, 4.0 correspondence, uh, GEA transmittal of decision. This is for the um, storage units, 161 Fourth Line Road. They all um, have the unanimous vote to accept it uh, or to grant the permit. Um, what? Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, comments, questions, concerns? Mm -mm. mm -mm. 4.2 updated DCR forest cutting plan notice of intent for Gilchrist Road. Jessica, what is there? Um, nothing really new. We did already receive. Pretty much done. Or yeah. They've already done yeah. a bunch of it. We, um, we received all. this notice of intent before it had DCR comments on it. So this is just the one with DCR comments regimen. So again, it's just a notice, notification. We don't have any action items, but yeah, they've already definitely started. Yeah, it's not done. And it was all, it all looked clean when I drove by. Um, okay, cool. DCR. Or 4.3 DCR uh, Barker Hill Road proposed harvesting updates. Just if I can read it. Uh, the pre harvest walk on November 8th, which was yesterday at 4 p.m. Um, Jessica, you said that wasn't jurisdictional, really? Like it's, not, it's out of our. Um, and, I mean, it's state forest, yeah. So they have to follow what, like chapter 132 or whatever. Um, so I if, if anything, we would just get notified with another one of those notice of intent forms. Yeah, I think there wasn't, I think, one, one stream crossing and only partial. But only um, part of the project is within National Heritage Area and the other dates that they could only work and yeah, we've already gone through it. This letter says that they're proposing remove trees at risk for forest pathogens, release established regeneration, remove hazard trees along forest roads, trails, and provide wildlife habitat. Right. And then it's restricted to fall winter conditions. That could be a lot of trees. It needs a, it's thick. Mm -hmm. um, so the, let's see, moving on, uh, 4.4, Title Five proposed regulations. Um, I'm going to read just the quick blurb of a uh, brief explanation and rationale for changes. Um, Mass DEP is proposing to amend the Title V regulations to enhance protection of embayments and estuaries, particularly on Cape Cod, the islands in southeastern Mass, from nitrogen pollution originating from wastewater and other sources. The Title V regulations establish minimum standards for the proper siting, construction, upgrade, and maintenance of on-site sewage, sewerage, the uh, disposal systems and the appropriate means for the transport and disposal of uh, septage in order to protect public health, safety, welfare, and the environment. The current regulations do not have nitrogen reduction provisions for natural resource areas. Mass DEP is also filing new draft regulations at 314 CMR 21 
um, 0 0.00 to provide a watershed permitting approach to control nitrogen and other pollutants from entering the embayments and estuaries. Um, yeah, this is in the folder and with links. It's really the Cape, Cape area. They've got a lot of problems down there for the nitrogen. So we don't have to review it tonight, but in our OneDrive, I printed out all the regulations. So if you guys are interested, feel free to review those and then you can send in feedback as residents. Thank you. Do you think that, or do you uh, foresee this being an issue up here? I don't know. I mean, right now it's more tidal area protection, I think. It could be. I don't know, the last time the regs were revised. So. Okay. Education and conferences. Um, as always, MACC offers classes. Um, I believe it was Ashby's Conservation Commission had an invasive workshop this coming up weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you have to look on their Facebook page, oh. though. Oh, that's great. Um, and then items for discussion at next meeting. We have the continuance of tie and bond. Yeah. Um, did Joe Shank ever get his stuff together? Not yet. Okay, no. I, told, I gave him a deadline to submit an OI, and his NOI, he wants it to be on the 14th meeting, but... You also have another deadline for Swanico Meadows with that mm -hmm. maintenance. Um, that yeah, could be a heavy meeting. Meeting. It would have, could to, be. That would have to be in the big hall, huh? I don't know. Yeah. Um, there was something else. That we had, but there. Did, did there, you know? Can I, can I bring in uh, my rough draft? Of, did you know? Well, we also might have the spawn of cook forestry. Um, that is combined with surely. We'll wait till January. Then we can wait till January. The um, forest, the habitat restoration. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they'll. Did you give them a deadline? I just asked if they still wanted to, if there was, if they still wanted to be heard on the 14th. And I asked twice. Deadline? But, but the thing, their application is not complete. So I hey, wouldn't hold the hearing. Nope. Even <laughs> until we get that. So I'm just, I'm guessing that they're not ready. But I need to get that in writing. So if we don't have a lot of, because we've caught up with bylaws and um, regs, maybe we might have a chance to discuss. Jones, did you know? Um, so we can. I'll have it ready. I'll get it to you. Yeah. So you if we have folder. time, yeah, if to you have talk time. about it because it would yeah. be nice. Since start doing whatever we want to send out if we choose to, um, the first quarter. Because mm -hmm. we have to go through selectmen and right. Plus, when we, when we just went up through the hazard mitigation plan, that there was an item in there that can be addressed in the did you know thing. So mm -hmm. we can check, check that we did something. Well, that could be an item for discussion, too. There's going through that table in more detail and actually starting to have a discussion about what we can be doing to meet those goals. Sure. Um. Next meeting is Wednesday, December 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Board of Select Chamber, second floor. This meeting will also be held via virtual Zoom, remote in accordance with COVID-19 safe meeting guidelines. Um, we need attendance. Anne uh, doesn't think she will be able to make it, um, which is fine. Uh, Colby, I'll remind you. I'll remind you, Kevin. Um, thank, thank you for taking time out of class to join us tonight. I know it's crazy, but we only have one meeting, November and December. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, we might have that RDA. Or 
um, squawk with Meadows for the next meeting. Right. The, I, Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, oh. the habitat. Oh, that. Okay. I said Shirley you, Road, so I got oh, I, oh, I did that too. Okay. But the well, squawk okay. with Meadows, you gave her a deadline. Yes, they so, do have a deadline. Um, and there's a site walk for the next week. Next Wednesday. Okay. But you'll send out that schedule. So thank you, Matt, for joining us. Jessica, thank you for joining us here. Thanks, Matt. We appreciate it. Thanks, to everybody. Thanks, Happy Matt. Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you. Before, before we leave, we got a oh, yeah. well, we got a motion to, a motion to <laughs> like Colby, did you have something or are you motioning? No, I was I'm moving towards the door. Sorry. <laughs> He's I'll make here. a motion to adjourn. Other stuff to do. At the time. Uh, at eight fifty-seven p.m. We have a and second. second. Uh, roll yeah. call vote, please. Patricia General, yes. Savoy, yes. Uh, James Gates, yes. Alfred, yes. Linda Mac, yes. Colby Streeter, yes.